Michigan came into the picture late my junior season. Coming into a program like this, to be honest with you, is definitely a humbling experience. A lot of times you have a lot of cats like me who come in as the top guy from their high school. They're feeling themselves, they're expecting to play. They wanted me to make that transition like my father from defensive end to D tackle. So I knew if I wanted to make that transition and I wanted to see the field at some point, you know, I was really gonna have to start working. Biggest thing first was starting with my body. When I got to Michigan, I was 240 pounds. Through work, through dedication, now I'm 305. Um, I think looking pretty good, in my opinion. <laughs> He dominates the weight room. He's just all business when it comes to that. The mutant strikes! The nickname the mutant, we have this tradition when going into camp when Coach Hearn basically comes up to the front, he'll go by position group and give an honest report of how each player approached the summer training cycle. First thing he said is, Chris Jenkins is a mutant. Some of the things he does in that weight room just has me sitting dumbfounded thinking, dang, this kid is mute. I'm pretty good at the Turkish get up. I did 170 this year. I could have did more. I wanted to break the record. 170 is the record. I tied the record, but I definitely could have did 175, 180. Sophomore year and junior year, being around like guys like Mozzie, they were able to teach me every single day what I needed to change about my technique, why I needed to do this on a certain play. When he called me in January and said he was coming back, it was, I'm gonna, one, become a really good pass rusher. Number two, I'm gonna put on the weight that I need to to become a bona fide NFL prospect. He's certainly done that. Setting up the screen, that's intercepted! Chris Jenkins picked it off! The sign of a really good leader is you try to leave the place better than you found it. He's certainly building a legacy here. If I had to summarize my time here in Michigan, I'd just say, trust the process. You may not get results now, you may not get results when you want it, but you gotta take it a step at a time every single day. Because if you do that and you stick to it, you're gonna get results at some point. Never thought it would be me in that type of position especially coming out of high school, but putting my head down and working and getting in with the coaches and trying to maximize that opportunity. Looking back, it was definitely all worth it. My dad played in the league for about 10 years, nose tackle, you know, back in the old school days, and he was a beast, absolute gladiator. He was a four-time pro bowler, went to the Super Bowl once, unfortunately lost to Tom Brady. My uncle was also a D-tackle, 13 years in the league. As a child, Chris was a very awkward kid. There were times where we used to look at Chris and wonder, you know, what he was thinking, what was going on in his mind. When I was younger, I didn't like getting hit. There would be a lot of times in practice where I'd get hit, I'd just start crying. Eventually my dad, he got fed up. He's like, you know, I'm gonna toughen you up. You're gonna hit me, we gonna do one-on-one, -on -one. we gonna do stock yards together. And he was like, come on, hit me. And I was like, no, he was like, come on, hit me. Like, hit me, show me what you got. You know, we kept, I don't, I forget how long we kept going, but we kept going until he said, he was like, see, you got something in you. I'll just put that on the field. Stop being scared. Play fast. Play strong. Good luck. It's fair warning. Another thing, y'all. He eats everything. He can't keep no food in his house. It's not my fault. I'm a grown man. You see? Mm -hmm. I'm a grown boy. It really just took, you know, time to, for me to develop that self confidence. The adjustment, getting used to my body, and realizing that how much strength I actually had, and the amount of athletic ability I had to play this game. Once I started to realize that, 
it really started to make sense to me, and the more confident about myself I started to get. Hey, Chris, would you do 77? Well, I could. Mm -hmm. Would you do number 77? Mm -mm. Nah. Would you say that's burnout? My, nah, my dad nah, admitted. Yeah, because oh. he, ain't, he ain't earned it yet. Oh, yeah, what you say? He ain't earned it, huh? He ain't earned it. <laughs> <laughs> Chris matured a lot. This is his fourth year there now. I can remember when he first got out here and I told him, I said, you know, when you're ready for help, I'll help you. But I, I wasn't gonna force it on him. Whenever my uncle talks to me after the game, he's a technician, you know, he lets me know why my get off isn't where it needs to be right now. He lets me know why I'm not handling the double team well on that play because of my technique. I don't like football. Um, and so I didn't put him in football as a child. He was in every other sport. I will say this, I've learned to love it because of him. So October is his whole, we celebrate the whole month for his birthday. Dang, is this, is this wrong for color? My dad's always asked me why I play the game. I try to give him a wholesome answer. You know, I play for you guys, I play for my family. He knew that wasn't true. It's a selfish answer to be honest with you, but you know, I play that game for me. Ever since I was a kid, you know, everybody was talking about my dad, Chris Jenkins. You know, every time you hear my name, you think of my dad, Chris Jenkins. I was tired of being in everybody's shadow. When you hear the name Chris Jenkins, you know, I want you to think of me.